Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning and welcome to a new episode of Today's Best Stock Picks. It's Thursday morning, July 23rd, 2020. And I guess today we're going to talk about breakouts. Uh, not so much how to manage them after the breakout, but we're seeing sector rotation where we're getting to those outdoor stocks now. We've been talking about Lowe's, we've been talking about Home Depot, uh, we've been talking about the home builders that have been breaking out. So some really interesting plays here, but I think that these, what's interesting about these stocks is that some of them are a little bit more longer term plays because they're not so much active trading stocks where you see daily momentum in them on, on a daily basis. Uh, and, and certainly not enough where they're, they're consistent enough to be day trading actively. What I think is interesting and what I th based on the feedback that I'm getting from comments and both emails, which by the way, if you find these videos helpful, and especially if you find some profitable trades on these videos, click down and uh, subscribe to the channel. That would mean everything to me and you'll get some updates as well. Um, what's interesting is recognizing the difference between a day trading stock and a swing trading stock and recognizing when the circumstances have changed and you should no longer be aggressively trading certain stocks. So for example, a lot of the stay at home stocks like uh, Etsy, Wayfair, uh, DocuSign, uh, they're still absolutely in longer term uptrends, but the, um, the conviction on the long side has dramatically shifted. And when I say that, it means that we're starting to see these stocks trade below the opening price with consistency. We're not seeing well bid uh, higher highs, higher lows on the weekly charts with as much consistency as we did. As a matter of fact, we're starting to see a lot more inside or melted candles, uh, which you might know as a doji where there's little uh, bodies on the candlestick, um, which represents indecision. So that very uh, price action nature should shift how you plan to manage those trades. And we talk about it a lot in the room where we're working the order as opposed to maybe getting a little bit more aggressive on your initial entry because the expectation is there, but now it's not. So as a trader, especially somebody who's an active trader, you really need to recognize when the tape has changed, when rotation happens, and um, then trade appropriately based on what the stock normally does. So sticking to breakouts today, specifically the one that um, we were uh, trading pretty actively in our community yesterday, which was AMD. Uh, I personally did not carry an overnight in it. I don't like the uh, earnings that have been coming out right now, and I'm reducing my overnight exposure in quite a few stocks. Uh, and this is one that some people did hold overnight. I didn't. We're going to we're going to discuss that uh, and a few other scenarios. Uh, obviously, discussing the difference between Microsoft earnings yesterday and Tesla earnings after the close uh, from yesterday. Um, and today we have, after the close, Intel and E-Trade. Uh, but what's also interesting is uh, the financials just still can't seem to get a grip on anything. Goldman Sachs was down big yesterday. They seem to be opening at one extreme and closing on the other extreme with, without really any consistency. So I feel your pain uh, if you're trading any of those right now. Futures are up a little bit, uh, not as much as you would think. Um, but let's, uh, let's get over to the charts. So uh, first, we're going to talk about AMD. This was actually a, um, a trade that we made uh, heading into the breakout. We've been watching it, and it's been in the list for a while. Uh, yesterday would be what I would call a fuel candlestick, where it finally proved, again, we talk about wanting feedback from the market. It finally proved that it could stay above 57, and it was a great day trading stock yesterday. Again, I personally did not hold the overnight. We had a pretty heated discussion yesterday about why and it was really just a decision that I did not want to hold it because I don't like the earnings that have been coming out. Uh, again, that's just everybody's personal opinion. That's fine. Everybody can uh, trade however they want. Um, but looking for follow through here today, I'm definitely going to be looking to trade the stock long. Uh, it's just a question of what the um, reward potential is. Now, the big question we're getting is what do you believe is the next move in the stock? And this is also a part of the reason I didn't carry the overnight last night is based on what the stock normally does, I have $64 as the next target. Uh, so with mixed earnings um, yesterday as well, Microsoft down, Tesla up, and earnings in general not being awesome, um, I didn't really see the upside for myself personally carrying it because I have 64 as the next target. So again, you don't wanna really be risking two to make two, it's really just a question of where your entry price was. So I love the stock as far as if it holds the breakout looking for the next trade, but the reward potential through 264 is where I have it. So I'm going to be looking for the next pause uh, if I decide to hold something a little bit longer. As far as Tesla, obviously this is going to be on everybody's mind. It was consolidating 
uh, for a better part of a week and a half heading into earnings. You can see it's up almost 5% right now, roughly uh, $76, a little bit more than $76. So now the question is, do you get long at a higher opening today? Again, I'm going to give you the caveat, which uh, I don't really know what kind of experience everybody has. So trading a higher opening in the stock needs to meet certain criteria. For me personally, it needs to get out of this trading range, which is right around, uh, let's say, 1643, 1680, which is kind of right where it is right now. So it's, it's basically trading right at the top of this range where it failed, failed, failed three times. So it needs to get above that level. Prove to me it's going to stay above that level. And if it does, as I said in yesterday's video, that's where I'm going to start initiating a long. Should you be exiting your long if you held it through earnings? Um, that's a personal preference. Look, I mean, the bottom line is the stock is volatile. It's got um, a lot of buyers in it right now. Should you be exiting it? Again, that's your personal decision. Should you be shorting it? No, I think you're out of your mind. <laughs> if you're shorting it, um, you're going to find you're going to be right once, but you're going to be wrong for a year. Um, so again, I like it above those levels. I called those levels out yesterday. That's where I'm going to be looking at the stock today. Uh, Microsoft, completely different story. Microsoft actually uh, was down uh, bigger, I think, yesterday afternoon. Yeah, it was down around 206, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, yesterday. Uh, but again, I said, if it trades lower, I'm letting it go. And I had my level, which was 212, where I was looking for the stock to break. It's actually down uh, below 208, 207, 80 right now. So I have to stick to that conviction. That's my levels that I'm trading around. And if it pops up there, I'll look at it again, but it's not going to be on my radar, which is, by the way, a big part of the conversation. Um, we're, we're getting call outs by newer traders in the community um, who are asking about shorting stocks that they feel have gone too high. It's not a good idea. I'd rather see you get out of the stock if you believe it stopped going up and you're getting antsy to book a profit than saying, I want to get out, and now that means a short sale. That's not the case. And we actually talked about that in AMD yesterday where a couple of people called out. I'll, I'll just show you the chart for, um, the chart for a second where it was in this area where the stock was slowing down a little bit and we got some questions about, um, is it a short sale now because it's gone so far so fast? And the answer is no, it's just not a good idea to be shorting something that's super strong. Uh, can you get cute and get right once in a while? Yeah, but it's not a good idea. Uh, so keeping with the pace of stocks that are breaking out, which I think breakouts today are the, the, uh, the, the story for the week, I guess you could say, even the SPY gapped on Friday and finally get out of the trading range that we look at, uh, not Friday, on Monday. Um, so anyway, Bed Bath & Beyond had um, a good quarter and following through there. Again, another stock that's not necessarily a day trading stock. It's a swing trading stock. I like the stock as long as it stays above 93. Uh, Toll, we're going to stick now with some of the other stocks. Toll Brothers, Lennar, which we've been on top of Lennar now uh, for about a week and a half. And you can see it finally got up to the target that we were looking at. So looking for, see if we could punch through that 70, 72 level, really. Um, and last but not least, we have uh, Pulte Homes. So again, you can see the breakout. And we were talking about this a week ago, two weeks ago, we were starting to see rotation and we were calling them get out of the house stocks, hopefully even following everything that we've been talking about and really starting to get a feel for the tech stocks are not doing what they were doing. And now we're starting to see people positioning themselves for the next quarter, which if they believe the pandemic starts to subside, all of these stocks are gonna start to benefit, which includes Zillow. Zillow, actually, we called out earlier in the week, or maybe it was last Friday, I don't remember. Um, but now we said it's cleared the 65 level that we've been watching. Now it's just a question of how far does it go? And it's actually now paused for three days past this level, which is exactly what you want to see on a breakout. So looking to initiate, if we were looking to initiate a new trade, it would be a swing trade there. Uh, I want to talk about one trade that we called out yesterday morning that was probably the easiest day trade you'll ever have, uh, which was the IBM earnings that sold off on the gap higher on Tuesday and then heading into yesterday morning, it was very clear, look for this stock to find support at the previous day's low uh, and look to be a buyer if that support comes in. And again, just to give you an idea of what that looks like on a chart, here's the previous day's low and here's yesterday's low. So literally within pennies, the stock just rocketed and had a really super easy uh, day trade yesterday. Now, if you're uh, interested in learning how to do all this kind of stuff, you absolutely want to get into the boot camp because trading around these kind of objectives, setting what you believe is going to happen for the day, that's really where the easier money is made, whether it's day trading or swing trading, because it's really about being prepared, going into the day, knowing exactly what you're looking for. And then as soon as it happens, you, you actually put the trade on without hesitation because you did all of that homework. The hard work to make money as a day trader or a swing trader is before the market even opens, before the week even starts, because you're doing the research, you're doing the, 
the, the, the grunt work, so to speak, where you're on a treasure, you're, you're basically going to look for treasure. It's a treasure map here, and it's really just a question of which ideas uh, are the strongest. So congratulations to everybody who messaged me yesterday um, about this trade. Uh, I'm going to talk, talk a little bit about the, um, the COVID stocks. NVAX continues to be in our list. Hopefully, you've been uh, watching it since this gap when the when news story came out. We said, let it pause. It paused, exploded, and we just continue to look for spots to get long the stock. Carrying this overnight, that's completely up to you. And I had a lot of people ask me about this again yesterday. It's down 95 cents right now. You, you, one of the biggest mistakes I see by a mile is traders not putting into the context of the risk that they're taking. So the AMD trade, for whatever reason, if you liked it, anything that's COVID related right now, you're subject to any headline that comes out that could make this, the stock rocket or could make the stock take a 50% haircut super quickly. And that's not just reading the charts. You're not at the. You're not reading the tape anymore. You're you're trading a different catalyst. So I just want to make that clear, which is why I'm only day trading these particular stocks right now. Because personally, I've been through this before. I don't want to expose myself to a negative story where some where some phase trial fails and the stock, which is now let's say 150 or 147 or whatever the number is right now, and you wake up on bad news and it's 100 and you wipe out the last three months worth of profits. Yeah, yeah, you can argue that can happen in any stock, but this is a unique scenario. This is, this is a global story right now. So you're trading the news, you're not trading the charts. But from a day trading perspective, um, good volatility. OSTK, I hope you've been watching this with us for the last couple of weeks. It's been in play and continues to be in play. Yesterday actually had another inside candlestick breakout, continues to follow through. We just seem to be stair-stepping up in this stock and uh, hopefully it's on your list. Again, sticking with the breakout story today, DHI also had a nice pause through the breakout. And again, this is what we want to see. If a stock clears a level and pauses for a few days, that's exactly what we're looking for. So we're looking for another uh, longer term trade here. We have Yeti, which was called out yesterday in the room. Uh, look, bottom line is it's a good swing trading stock. It's a stock you want to hold a little bit longer. I mean, I'm not sure how much more clean you can get where you get a push, a pause, a push, a pause, a push, a pause, a push, a pause. I mean, it just keeps doing it all the way up. It's not as clean recently here, but it is making new highs. Uh, really, what the next thing to do would be looking to see if there's any resistance and you're at or near all-time highs. So solid opportunity here in Yeti as well. Now, the only thing here is that the stock has now, again, not a huge move, but it's just traveled $8.00. And if you could just look at what the stock did recently, 25 to 33, that's $8, 33 to uh, let's say 43, so $10. So it normally runs eight to $10 and it's already gone eight. So on a new swing trade, you don't have a high likelihood of following through to justify accepting risk. So probably a day trade looking for the next pause uh, for a new swing trade. Again, sticking to the outside stock stuff, we're looking at Lowe's, we're looking at Home Depot, all these stocks looking at all-time highs. For some reason now, these lower uh, dollar type stocks are breaking out now as well. So Dollar General actually peaked through uh, so and closed above the level as well. I want to talk about the opposite. So actually, one more stock, uh, which we called out last week. Um, uh, Camping World, again, sticking with the get out of the house theme. Uh, I hope you're following it because it's not really that difficult to, uh, to see what's going on here, uh, which now we'll talk about the opposite of that, which is DocuSign. Absolutely, you can see the different trend lines I've had to draw here because it went, I wouldn't say parabolic, but certainly went pretty strong. Look at the difference in the consistency here compared to what we're seeing here. We're starting to see indecision. We're starting to see much smaller candlesticks. We're not seeing larger green candlesticks. Um, and you can see now it's trading lower. Again, another, this is why I'm not carrying overnights as aggressively right now. I think the story's changing. Um, so anyway, the point that I'm making is recognizing the sector rotation is just gonna make your trading easier. We were uh, again, use this in context. This was really easy money on the way up in DocuSign, SE, Square, uh, FSLY. You can see the charts are changing dramatically here. Um, they're just not as clean. Look at this and this compared to what we're seeing now. There's a lot of indecision, and I think that's really highlighted by uh, Goldman Sachs. If you look at what's going on here, again, green indecision, green selling, indecision, selling, indecision, indecision, selling. We're not getting the, uh, the super clean follow through in some of these industries. And yeah, you gotta be on top of your game. Pay attention to what we're talking about every day um, and really listen to the idea of sector, rotate, sector rotation um, and stop banging your head 
in stocks that have changed. The story has changed. When I say the story, I mean the tape. Um, when the buying and selling pressure changes, when the order flow changes, when the price action picture changes, you have to adjust how you trade. You can't just trade in a vacuum and be like, well, it worked last month. It's not last month anymore. <laughs> so you got to pay attention to these stocks that are following through and learn to work the orders a little bit. So those are the ideas we're looking at today. We've got some really good clean breakouts uh, and uh, the futures are relatively normal. Uh, up 11. They were up 15 before. They're not nothing really. Uh, there is an ECB vote again today, so pay attention to that. We might see some uh, um, uh, some volatility in the futures, depending on how they vote for their stimulus package over in the UK. So have a great day, everybody.